fresh off cutting down the nets in Boston. Uh, we're excited to be joined uh, by Alex. So, Alex, welcome back. Congratulations, first of all. Thank you so much. Appreciate you having me again. Yeah, of course. Of course, I got to take this opportunity before you guys head down to Phoenix to uh, to really just kind of look back at what the run's been like so far and, and look ahead to what we've got coming up this week. So so let's start with this. I mean, the the run you guys have been on during this tournament so far has, has just been really impressive. What's kind of like the first word or first thoughts that come to your mind when you think of what this team has been able to do so far? I don't even know. I'd say it's just special. I think it's really just special what we've been able to do. I mean, going on this run, just playing with such dominance and really just, you know, really, we've just been going off and um, it's special. It's really special what we've been able to do and just how focused we are, how hungry we are and, you know, just, you know, always looking and like staying focused on the game that we're at right now and never looking ahead. We're never doing any of that. So, you know, we're focused at one game at a time and, um, you know, just staying true to our identity. It, it seems like you guys have, just, as you mentioned, they're like just taking things one step at a time. I mean, I feel like when we started talking before the tournament, even when it was with Stetson and you guys, you know, didn't seem like you were overlooking a 16 team, you were locked in. Is that just how it's been this whole tournament run where it's just lock in on, on whoever you're playing? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what we've done. I mean, yeah, sorry with Stetson. We were focused on Stetson. Every team that makes March Madness is good and You know, you really never know what could happen. So um, you got to be ready for anything. And, um, you know, it started with Stetson for us. And then once that game happened, we immediately flipped to Northwestern. So, um, you know, it was definitely um, – it's definitely, you know, hard at times. You, you don't want – you want to look ahead. You want to, like, see, like, who's in your region, like, possible matchups. But, you know, you can't overlook or else, you know, the worst could happen. So, um, you know, I'm just glad we've been able to do that. And the coaches, you know, they made sure that we were always locked in and stayed focused on who we're playing. So looking back at kind of kicking things off in Brooklyn there with, with Stetson and Northwestern, I know, I know you're used to playing in MSG when it comes to playing in New York. How, how do you like things in Brooklyn? It was cool. It was cool. It was a nice arena. It's a le lo lot less calmer than um and MSG and like the whole area is a lot less calmer. And um yeah. it was nice, but it was a super it was a nice arena, brand new pretty much. And um yeah, I definitely liked it. It was definitely it was definitely good for us. So you go from Brooklyn, you, you you check that off, and you, and you get to the next goal, which is to to be in Boston. Obviously, for you, probably means a little bit more being being a Boston area guy. How was it getting to to play games of this magnitude, basically in your home arena there? It was it was a dream come true. I mean, playing a Sweet Six team in an Elite Eight game in Boston, the arena. I've watched Celtics games, Bruins games been there before played high school basketball there AAU games when I was younger I mean it, it really meant a lot to me and um to do especially with UConn and like you know my guys and the coaches I love I mean you know it's definitely special then um being able to cut down the nets there too it was a dream come true so um you know it's something I'm never going to forget and every time you know once our season ends And I decided to go to Celtics playoff game. You know, it's going to bring back the memories when I'm sitting there. I'm like, damn, we really played there. We made it to the final four there as a team. So, um, yeah, it was definitely, it's definitely going to be a cool one. I'm curious because you talk about how you're, you're just like locked in on the opponent. Is it hard to block out some – there's a lot of storylines and narratives around each of these games. You, you show up in Boston, you got to play San Diego State, who you played in the national championship last year. That rematch storylines being thrown out there a lot. Is that something you guys are paying attention to? Or are you able to kind of block out some of that noise around these different matchups? We're, we block it out. We don't really hear any of the noise that, you know, stories develop around the game or whatever. We block it out. The only time we'll really pay attention to it is if, you know, we know San Diego State wants motivation from last year's game. So really, that's the only time we pay attention to it is like we know how hungry San Diego State will be. We know how, you know, excited they are to, you know, play UConn again. So um, really, that's the only time we pay attention to that stuff, knowing that they're going to come out for revenge. And um, other than that, we didn't we didn't care that it was a national championship rematch. We knew. We, we knew how good they were just because they made it to that game last year and we had the ultimate respect for them. But other than that, I mean, last year was in the past and we're focused on this run. I'm I'm curious, kind of in terms of that that storyline stuff, I, I know Coach Hurley yesterday brought up in the press conference, I th think it was like a former Illinois player had, had tweeted out some stuff that, that gave <laughs> him a little bit of extra motivation. Do you see some of the stuff out there that, that whether it's like opposing fans or people associated with programs chirping a little bit, that type of noise out there?
No, no, I definitely do. I definitely do. We got we got a lot of time to ourselves in between in between games and you know, if you're on social media for a little bit, you'll definitely see what other people say or, you know, opposing fans would be tweeting and stuff. So you definitely You definitely see it. You just can't let it get to your head or you use it as motivation, like Coach Hurley said. Yeah, yeah, and they're definitely a nice group of Illinois fans chanting that they wanted you guys, and uh, they they got you. Um, Yeah, we see that video. We did see them <laughs> chance. I think it was on their campus. We did. Yeah. See them. So you, I mean, going into that game, Illinois seemed like it was going to be you know kind of the the toughest matchup that you guys had uh, had played to date, just in in terms of their roster, their size, the way they play. Um, what stood out to you about that Illinois team leading into that game? It was definitely their offense. I think they were going into the game number one or number two in the country in offense. And um, just the versatility that they have at each position, like Coleman Hawkins, who's their center, he's 6'10", but he doesn't play like a center. Then their point guard, 6'6", their two is 6'6", their three is 6'6", like they're all 6'6", or taller. And, um, you know, it's definitely super unique, just their size and how they play. Domask loved posting up a lot, which was unique for a point guard. Coleman Hawkins, like I said, shooting, and then Terrence Shannon, just you know, just relentless in transition. So, um, really, it's um, it was it was such a versatile team, and like you know, it's not it's not often where you see a team built like that. So you know, we knew that their offense was definitely going to lead the way for them. So that that first half, you, you guys obviously get out to that quick start. I think it was nine nothing. Then they they claw back into it. You get a little bit more separation at, at halftime. What's the message at halftime? Because I did notice you guys were in the locker room for the majority of the the halftime. You guys came out a little later than normal, I felt like. You thought that? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> we always try to time it up. I mean, I know the coaches try to time it up where we leave every time. Um, no, the halftime message was just, it was honestly, it was nothing. It was really the same as it normally was. It was nothing crazy. It was just our defense has been really good so far in the first half. We just got to continue on the defensive end. We know the offense is going to come. We didn't have a good first half on the offensive end. But really, it's just our defense that carried us. And then, you know, we thought we could still fix the defensive end because we let up offensive rebounds. We let 50-50 balls slide. So, um, you know, we really just wanted to tighten up the defensive end, and we just continue to give confidence to each other, like if you're open, shoot it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, dating back to, to that – Last couple minutes of the first half, um, you, you guys go down on that extended 30-0 run, which, I, I mean, something I've never seen in person before. What, what's it like being on the court in a moment like that? Like, as that's happening, I kept waiting, like, just sitting there being like, all right, they're, they're going to score at some point. And then it's like you guys pick off a pass or do, just do something. And it just kept going and going. And it just felt like it was something that just kept snowballing there. What was it like for, from your perspective out there? It didn't seem real. I mean, nobody knew it was a 30 0 run probably until after the game. And um, we honestly didn't know either. We were just going and going and going. And like, we just kept going. But it was so much fun. I mean, it's so fun being on that run. We're just hyped for each other. And the defense is clicking. It gives us more energy on the defensive end. And offensively, we started knocking down shots. Donovan was dunking it. And um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a, it was such a cool run and such a cool experience. And, it, it it didn't feel real. That's all I could really say. I had to watch it back on the bus ride home, be, making sure, like, all right, we actually went on a 30 0 run. Are you able to take in any of the crowd noise and stuff at that point while you're going on that run, or are you just, like, so locked in you don't get to appreciate it till you look back on it? We're so locked in. I don't know if there was a UConn chant happening during it. I don't know if Multiple, there were. Yeah. There were? Yeah. Oh, there were? See, I didn't even know that because we, we were just so locked in. But um, I didn't hear anything outside of what was happening except for the huddles and what the coaches were saying. But um, yeah, it was it was insane. Um, I think one thing that just really, uh, I think my probably my favorite play. I don't think your dunk was in that run, so we'll get we'll get to that. But I think my favorite play during it was. The, was it was okay. All right, so then all right, I had then I got two favorite <laughs> plays. I got two favorite plays during that run. We'll talk about the dunk secondly. Uh, so I think my one of my favorite sequences, Donovan blocks the shot, then gets back down on the court, dunks on them. I mean, it seemed like he was just kind of in control from the, the second that game tipped off yesterday. What did you see from him during that game yesterday? We knew that we had the advantage with him. I mean, you know, their center, who was Coleman, he wasn't, you know, we thought like Donovan could, you know, really control the paint and – um you know, we thought that we could establish that and he did a great job of that. And he knew going in that 
you know, he just had to dunk everything. There wasn't a, there wasn't a shot blocker to worry about. There wasn't, you know, really any like, you know, presence of that. So he could dunk everything and then um really just protect the worm. I think he did a best job of walling up and um, not committing fouls, just helping us stay in the game. And um, yeah, when he's in the game, it really changes everything for us and his blocks, his dunks. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I was just happy he dunked everything and like, yeah. We've been telling him that all year, just dunk everything. You know, he he did it. I was happy, and um, yeah, he was dominant. And um, yeah, I mean, that was one of his best performances. Yeah, it seems like you're you're taking the advice you're giving him and dunking it. So let's let's talk about let's talk about that play. <laughs> Break down for me what what it's been, what that play was like on your end. I know in transition, our co- coaches always tell us like you know don't always run for threes, like rim run, get some layups. And I noticed I got my first basket was a rim run. So I was like, I'm going to keep doing that. So I rim run again. And I was like, I'm wide open. I might as well dunk it. And I didn't realize there was a defender right behind me. And then I I hanged on the rim. I never hang on a rim. Like if I'm if I if I rarely dunk in practice or if I rarely dunk in layup lines, I'm never hanging on the rim. So um, that was the first time ever I've like hanged on the rim before. And um, yeah, then I'm Haas. Catch you there? Yeah, he tried to catch me. He's, I guess everyone was in shock, I assumed, and um, they didn't want me to fall. Then Samson thought Hassan wasn't big enough to help me down to the ground, so he joined. And um, yeah, it was. I appreciate them for their concerns, but I was all good. I, I've got to say, it's a smart move too, like to at least act like they're going to try to hold you up, so you don't get teed up for uh, like trying to do any hang on the rim stuff. Like if they think you're going to fall. I feel like that's the go-to. You got to have someone behind you trying to hold you up. Yes, exactly. And I had to hang on to the rim or else I would have fell right on my back and then um, it would have not been good. Yeah, no, we, we don't want that. Uh, so yeah, no, I mean, I, I think those two plays during that run probably like some of the highlights of, of the game for me. Once you like blow open the game, what's it then like for that last, what was it maybe like 10 plus minutes of the game, you're, you're up 30 at that point. What, what's kind of going through your head at that point? Really just to keep going. Their coach always talks about how um, champions don't back down. They, they won the Big Ten Championship. They're not going to back down. They've made it to the Elite Eight for a reason. They made it this far that they're not just going to give up. So we had to keep going. We had to, you know, keep pushing, you know, just continue to get better. As long as we're getting better every immediate time out, I think it's worth it. So, um, that's exactly what we did. We stayed focused, stayed locked in. And, um, you know, at the same time, we we made sure we enjoyed the moment. We made sure everybody got their moment in the game and, um, you know, really just took full advantage of it. So so you go from that buzzer ends. It's time time for another uh, net cutting ceremony. What one? What, what did this meet one mean to you? A lot. Like I, like I said earlier, it was really just a dream come true. I mean, you know, I never thought I'd cut down the nets at TD Garden before. So, you know, it was definitely... It was definitely, you know, unique to me. And um, but at the same time, it really Boston, it could have been, you know, Vegas again. It could have been anywhere to where um we cut down the nets to make it to the final four. So, you know, it's special. It's special just because it's hard to make it there. And, you know, it's it's like, you know, it's a memory I'll always have. And, you know, for it to be in Boston, it's cool for me, but really anywhere it's cool just because, you know, UConn's going to the final four. I, I've got to ask you now, break down the, the locker room water celebration for me. Cause you look at the photos, there's like a, a lot going on there. It's like coach's wife is hiding under her jacket. Donovan's trying to yeah. run out of the room. Uh, w- what's the locker room? Uh, you tried running out the room? I think Donovan. Donovan tried? Honey? Oh, yeah. wow. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, there was a lot going on. So we had a discussion if we wanted water or not. Some people wanted water. Some people didn't. But then we ultimately decided on water. We had to do it. And then um we were waiting for water and then uh we were waiting for coach and um we had a manager he he helps lead um there's like when we shoot during practice they like they do chance during our shooting yeah. which is like you know that was one of the chance they did so they were like you know let's bring out a chance so we did a couple chance and that was the one that caught on video so while we were waiting then right as we were about to get begin another chant coach comes in with his water and then a whole water happened I didn't realize coach was smashing a water bottle on his head during it. I didn't realize all of that. And then um, we have like a little tradition, I guess, since it developed in um the PK tournament last year that after we win a chip, coach got to take a ball and just slam it into the ground. So, um, 
we did that and then yeah that was the celebration but it's a lot of fun the water celebrations are a lot of fun Yeah, what, 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 how does it determine who gets to slap the sticker up on the uh, on the bracket there? we all decided as a team we thought Okay. donovan we thought donovan deserved it. i mean he had a monster performance and you know he was just a beast out there so he deserved it The Huskies have advanced, and our friends at Martin Rosal's Meats are running a promotion for our listeners this Saturday, April 6th. In honor of the Final Four, the first 40 customers who shop at their retail store in New Britain this Saturday will receive a complimentary four-pack of Rosal hot dogs. Celebrate game day the right way with some locally made, high-quality meat products from Martin Rosal's, and go support a Yukon fan-owned business. And now, back to the episode. So you, you guys get all the celebration. Um, head back to, to campus. Now you got a few days here before you head out to Phoenix. Um, how long are you able to actually celebrate for before it's already time to prep in uh, on Alabama? Is it pretty instantaneous? Probably today's the last day of Yeah. celebrating and really enjoying the moment because, you know, it's hard to make it to the final four. So you got to Yeah. celebrate a little. And then now, um, yeah, probably starting tomorrow. We got practice tomorrow, probably straight into prep on Alabama. I wasn't able to watch their game against Clemson. I saw the ending, though. Yeah. You know, we'll probably watch that. And then, um, yeah, just get into the personnel. I mean, you know, Alabama, us, Purdue. I got this game on my TV right now. It's looking like NC State. So um, Okay, all right. I I I don't have it on right now. So you you you're breaking news for me here. they're So up. They're up twelve with two minutes left. Okay, all right. Let's DJ hope that don't Burns with twenty six points. You, you mentioned his name, and I actually was going to ask this later on, because are you able to kind of enjoy the tournament for what it is while you're playing in it? Like, are you able to enjoy, like, and pick up on, like, the DJ Burns storyline going on, the, the guy from Oakland, Jack, and all those threes? Like, are you able to soak that in a little bit at least? No, of course. I'm definitely I'm a I'm a huge college basketball fan. So if it's not um you know if it's not our games, I'm watching the other games. You know, I'm getting excited for tournaments. I'm getting excited for matchups like oh Purdue Tennessee play. Like that's a really good game. I gotta watch. So, you know, I was just waiting all day to watch that game and I watched the game. But whatever, if there's like a great matchup or really just any type of matchup, like I'm just super excited to watch. And yeah, I mean March Madness, it's always been my favorite time of year even you know now i'm playing it but way before when i was watching it it was my favorite tournament i just look forward to it every year so i'm definitely a huge fan and, you know the oakland the oakland game was definitely hyped we were watching that um nc state's run's been unbelievable so yeah yeah it's definitely a lot of fun to watch yeah dj burns zach eating another uh possible fun matchup if that if that score holds there <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so so what is this week like for you um in terms of you know getting ready for the final four heading out and then once you're out in phoenix what what those first couple of days are like i know for you it's not not quite a new experience you got to do it last year so just what what, what are you expecting this week Yeah, it's probably it's gonna be a lot of prep work on Alabama, just you know, really locking down on what they want to do, the keys that they want to do. But and then at the same time, it's just staying true to what we do. We're probably gonna do the same stuff we normally do in practice, just continue to get better, continue to sharpen up the defensive end, and then you know, at the end of the day, you gotta get a lot of shots up. Practice will get a lot of shots up. Myself personally, I'll probably I I need to get a lot of shots up. I'll do I'll definitely do that before practices and um, yeah. Yeah, just you continue to do the same thing. It's, you know, it's been working so far. Just continue to do the same thing. And, you know, but I think more so we're going to be more locked in on Alabama just because I do know they score a lot of points. They they, they definitely – they can definitely make it attract me. Yeah, yeah, definitely Run, running uh, Jackson three. So uh, it, should, it should be an interesting uh, matchup there. I, I, I've got to ask because we've seen it across the board in a lot of these games. And it, it's not just you guys that have struggled a bit from three. It seems like teams across the board in the tournament have been struggling from three. Do you, is there anything you kind of have noticed around it? I, I know I, I saw there was some TikTok video going around about like the balls feeling differently. Um, How has it felt to you? Is it just kind of just like, Teams are just kind of running into a little bit of tough luck with these threes. Maybe uh, for me, I it might be the ball. I think the ball is a little, it has too much air in it. I think That it's that's what the TikTok guy was saying. <laughs> it's definitely, it's, it's got a lot of air. Some people are saying the ball is, um, it's too grippy. So, um, Okay. yeah, I think, but you know, maybe it's just how much air there is in it. But other than that, I mean, Golki didn't have a problem with it. So there's really no excuse for it. So, yeah.
What, what do you think it says about you guys? Like not shooting anywhere near your percentage from three and, and you're still able to do what you've been able to do to these teams. We can just win any type of game. It's, I mean, we've won countless games before we've won. We won a track meet against St. John's in the Big East tournament. We've won grinded out games, low scoring games we've won this year. And so, um, yeah, we could really win any type of game in any type of style. And um, I think that just makes us so much harder to guard and just so much harder to play against. Yeah. I know one thing this time of year that, that gets brought up, especially with what you guys have been not uh, have been doing is, is comparing this team to last year. And I'm not going to ask you, you know, which team's better or anything like that, but I am going to ask what's the biggest similarity to last year's team with this year's team. And then what's the biggest difference between the two teams? Similarity. I think offensively and defensively, we're pretty much the same, pretty much run the same concepts and then defensively we try to do the same thing and definitely rely a lot of our on our toughness rebounding defense i definitely say those are similarities like you know what we've been doing last year is pretty much the same this year but then um this year the difference it's tough with the differences i think and i think one of the differences like when when we had big leads we wouldn't you know let up or give the other team hope like mm -hmm. i mean this year we have with Stetson in the second half, uh, Northwestern in the second half. We started, you know, letting teams back in, whereas, like, last year's group, like, when we were up big, like, we stayed up. And, uh, like, Gonzaga, mm -hmm. Arkansas, those type of games. So um, I think that's really the only difference is just last year's team, we wouldn't give the other team hope, and we just, you know, continue to go. And uh, this year's team, we, we haven't figured that out yet, but we did make, you know, you know, strides in that against Illinois. I think Illinois was a turning point on that. So, you know, maybe the differences are gone now. <laughs> um, all right, we're going to go to some of the questions that uh, that we've gotten on uh, on social. Uh, all right, let's go with this one first. There's a lot of a swag you guys get when you when you make the Final Four and that type of stuff. <laughs> what, what What's your favorite swag item you've gotten? Swag item? The Nike Techs. I'd say the Nike Techs from last year's Final Four, then – um the kobe's we've been getting some kobe's say. this year so it's definitely it's got to be the kobe's too all right uh you guys haven't had to take any planes yet this uh this tournament but now you, you do to get to phoenix who who do you sit next to on the plane we usually just sit by ourselves we'll, we'll each have a row to ourselves and uh, right. just lay down if not um i'll usually usually a manager comes chats with me or you know we all get up it's gonna be a long flight so we're all gonna get up and bother each other probably so that's my job on the planes to bother people so i do that who do you usually bother first donovan okay all right. easy easy target yeah yeah i mean this could be a long flight for him especially i mean i it's gonna be a long flight for me and i'm five five eight on a good day so. <laughs> <laughs> uh Let's see, what else do we have here? Oh, this one is interesting. So I know Coach Hurley talked about the Big East coaches having a group text. Is there any group text with Big East players? Like, you guys text or interact at all? I don't even know there's a Big East um, coaches chat. Um, but We, we got to get players? our hands on some of the screenshots. I mean, that... <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> players? No, not really. I don't, at, least the, I, at least with me, I don't know. I'm not in any Big East group chats. I don't think anybody else is. I think... We'll we'll support each other maybe during March Madness. Like I know we'll product. I mean, at least me, I'll be cheering for the other Big East teams during March Madness, unless we got to play them. Just you know, with how tough the league is, just how much respect we have for each team. I think that's the only only thing. But like, I mean, we're friendly. I mean, I got some friends that play on other Big East teams, yeah. so maybe talk to them here and there. But other than that, there's I don't at least I don't know. There's no group chat. All right, uh, we got a a couple fun. Uh moments from this tournament run so far so this one was big on social media it was uh andre johnson's game winner against uh northwestern uh your, your your thoughts on that i loved it i loved it he deserved to shoot it he made it we've been telling him i know tristan has they've been telling him you know you got to go in the game when you get in the game you got to shoot like you don't know how many more times you have to, be able to get in there you got to shoot it he shot it he made it I know coach wasn't happy just because he's good friends with coach Collins. So, um, yeah. But then that, he, he just, I loved it. I wouldn't call it a game winner, but you know, it was, that's it was what good. he called that. Those were his words. No, I know. I've seen it too, but he's not a game winner. <laughs> um, I, I think one thing that's been just really 
amazing to see is is what Steph has done when you've thrown him on when when the, he's been thrown on guys like uh, Taron Shannon or, or Boo Boo. I mean, he he really walked both those guys up. They they did nowhere near what what they normally do. What's it like seeing uh, a guy like him, just a, a freshman, really be able to you you know you could throw him on anyone and you know he's going to lock him down. Yeah, it's it's a blessing to have him on the team. I mean, I mean for a freshman especially to do that, guarding all American players, guarding the best players in college basketball, really it's um it's unbelievable what he's doing. And just defensively, he's really he's really helped us out so much, just guarding them, you know, gaining us momentum and an advantage to where we're comfortable with him guarding one through five, really anybody. So um it's really a, it's just a great job he's done. And um, yeah, we wouldn't be here without him. Uh, all right, this one came in. If you had to rate these three plays from like your favorite to make to, I guess it's not really least favorite, but like if you had to rank them, a block, a dunk, or a three, like what's what's the ranking on, on how you would how you would see those three? For myself personally, yeah. or like someone yeah. else? For me, yeah. Um, blocks last for me. Okay. The blocks last. Um, we'll go with the thir- threes first, dunk second. Okay. Block right. third. Yeah. Right. yeah. That's probably what I expected from you there. So my, uh, dunk, my dunks, they're not like energetic. They're not like Andre Jackson dunks. They're not like Donovan dunks. They're not like, you know, Steph's dunk that he had last game. They're not like those. So like, you know, I'm going to get like a nice little clap or two. And then, um, you know, just jog back on defense. Yeah, you you got your electric one in there yesterday, so don't don't sell yourself too short there. That's my one dunk, my <laughs> one energetic dunk so far in two years. Um, <laughs> this, this one came in, um, just from like a a culture perspective in in building this team. It, it just seems like you guys are are just really unselfish, and that everyone's looking out for each other, trying to make the best play possible. What do you think? You know, like has been the key contributing factor to you guys being able to stay that way throughout the season? Because I know at times, you know, when times, you know, get in, into these big games, sometimes things go, change a little bit and, and guys want to take over what, but you guys just seem to have stayed the path of being unselfish and, and just being a true team this whole run. Just the trust that we have in one another. We know how great of a player we all are on this team. And, um, you know, we're not afraid to make the extra pass. We're not afraid to, you know, let another guy shoot a great shot and say you shooting a good shot. So, in, I mean, it's just the trust that you have in one another. And, you know, the coaches, they've instilled that too. They made sure, like, if we took a bad shot, they're going to tell you and they're going to tell you if you should have passed it or not. So, you know, they're holding us up to, um, you know, the standard too with it. So, but, um, you know, it's unique playing on a team like that just because you could watch many teams and, you know, they could be selfish at times. And, you know, it's not as fun to watch or it's not as fun to be a part of. And, you know, it's really fun being a part of this team. It's really fun being part of this program just from, you know, the fact that, you know, we're so unselfish. I, I feel like one of my favorite things to watch during tournament time outside of the basketball action is these, uh, the press conferences, either like before or after a game, you guys are all up on the podium there. What's it like sitting there while guys are asking your head coach about like his underwear or like asking you to like pick words to describe him in front of him? What, what's that like being up there in those situations? They're funny. I mean, it's just <laughs> we know the superstitious work, superstitious stuff works. We know, you know, people might have thoughts about how our coaches and stuff, but um, we know who, you know, we really know what the truth is. And, you know, it's funny to listen to stuff and we love it, though. I mean, it's just, you know, time we spend together. It's just, you know, funny moments where we got to describe our coach in one word and um. You know, it's it's all it's all a good time. We're just trying to enjoy, you know, everything that comes with this uh, March Madness tournament. Yeah, yeah. All right. This, the, on the superstition standpoint, I've got to ask this for him because he he begged me. Well, he tweeted at me, so I'll I'll do it to make him happy. And this is from Big Larry, our guy. When he when he saw you guys in in Europe over the summer, he started growing a beard. He said he wanted to rock a mustache during uh during Phoenix, but he's been uh he's ha- he's been growing the beard the whole season. He want he says it's gonna come up to you. You want him to shave the beard and, and do the mustache or keep the beard? He's been doing the beard the whole season. Yeah. Well, you gotta keep the beard then. That's, you what, can't, that's what I said. You can't you can't switch up like we made it to the final four with you with the beard. It's clearly the beard that made us there. So you gotta keep the beard. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you can't you can't mess with it. Um no. what, what are you what are you most looking forward to outside of the basketball action from uh being in Phoenix? Just 
Um, just the environment. I think it's the environment. I mean, knowing that I'm going to play in two NFL stadiums is like kind of weird to me. So I think, I mean, it's always fun just seeing um the environment and just the setting and everything that comes with, you know, the final four, the elevated court that you've uh, oh, watched yeah. growing up and Yeah, and then, you know, it's like a nice little celebration before the games. Like, you get recognized for stuff. and Not, like, recognized. You're, like, you know, yeah. there's events that you got to go to as a team. And um, it's just a cool time. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be spending time with the guys. And then, um, yeah, I think it, I think the coolest part is the NFL stadium. Yeah. Uh, I'll wrap with this one. What was it like being in these uh, in these heavy UConn fans, uh, how, how they traveled to both these games in, in Brooklyn and Boston? It seemed like great UConn crowds. I mean, the one last night I thought was probably one of the best UConn crowds I've ever seen, uh, especially in a neutral site game. What, what have you been uh, thinking seeing those? I thought Boston was unbelievable. I thought Boston was a great crowd. San Diego State was a good crowd, but then Illinois was an unbelievable crowd. And uh, Brooklyn, it was a cool, it was a cool setting. It was, you know, it was it was a good amount of UConn fans. Yeah. So it was it was nice in Brooklyn, but Boston, they took it to another level. So we really appreciate that. I lied. I forgot I had one more here that came in from uh from social. When it comes to being in the final four, do you have any preference if you play in the first game or the second game of the of the night, or do you just not care? Just throw you what throw you out there whenever. I don't care. Just throw us out whenever. We'll be ready, whether whatever time it is, we'll be ready to go. I I could care less what time what time or who plays first. There we go. All right. Well, well, Alex, I, I appreciate it. Enjoy the uh, trip out to Phoenix. We'll see you out there. And, and I'm hoping the next time we talk, I could upgrade this uh, quarter zip here. I got, got to get a new one, right? Yes, you got to. We all want new ones. <laughs> we all do. Well, Alex, I uh, appreciate it. Uh, have a good, good trip out to Phoenix and can't wait to talk to you afterwards. Thank you so much.